When anyone's thinking about being good at engineering, they only really focus on the subset of skills related to engineering. But this is only a small portion of the skills that you need to be that great engineer. So whether you're looking to get that promotion, getting that next job, or just be the great engineer you'd always wanted to be, these are my top 10 skills that will help you get there. My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. Coming in at number 10 is your mathematical ability. So whether that be the engineering or just the plain maths. Every engineer needs to have good maths as that's what we're doing day in, day out. We're calculating the strength of materials, we're calculating the load path through structures. So we need to have that subset of mathematical skills. This is only really the core base that you need to have. It's something you need to focus on, making sure you're looking at that structural mechanics. There is a lot of tools out there to help you with that assessment, as potentially you've got eTabs, Structural Toolkit, or other types of software that will help you do that assessment. Yes, you can be reliant upon them, but that's not a good thing either, as you need to be able to assess it by hand to make sure you're not made any errors as garbage in equals garbage out. Coming in at number nine is your leadership ability. Now, the further you move up through the ranks, the lower this will end up being. But based on my demographic, this is currently where I feel it fits for you. As everything we do is in some sort of group activity, whether we're dealing with internal developments, whether we're dealing with a wider community. So we're dealing with the architect trying to put that building together. That's another group. Or even bigger again, when we start to get to construction, there's a builders and other subcontracts that we need to do. So you need to have some sort of leadership ability to be able to step up in those hard situations, help guide, make sure a project is going down the right path and knowing when we need to speak up. So those soft skills and being able to deal with conflict is something that is extremely important as an engineer. I've got some links in the below description to some books that will help you like soft is the new hard or never split the difference. These will help you get there and build those leadership skills that I think are critical for every engineer. Coming in at number eight is resilience. As everything we do as engineering can be quite hard, we can have hard projects. So we need to build that resilience to make sure we just don't faint at the side of any hardship. So it means that potentially you need to keep exercising to make sure your body is fit and healthy. If you are overworked, asking for additional help, just making sure you're caring for yourself. And when things get tough, just don't give up at the first sight. And this is all about being resilient to projects not just giving up and making sure you're dealing with the problems. It's all about that mental attitude. One of the easiest ways is not asking, these are the problems I've got, but how can I fix them? How can I make this better? Instead of just going, this is my problem. Number seven, now this is attention to detail. As engineering projects can be quite complex, and need design rule sets on how you're gonna put something together. So you need to make sure you're stepping through each stage, making sure you've got every single detail that you need on the project. Do I have a detail of this? Do I have a detail of that? Is it covered by typical details or not? As you may miss something critical if you don't have this, maybe making checklists or component lists to make sure that you've got everything you need off that checklist. Number six, and now this is analytical analysis. So be, are you able to break down a structure into its simpler forms? Can you break it down to the simple frames and build up to that more complex model? How are you going to analyze something? How do you know that what is coming out of the model is correct? And how have you assessed it? So your analytical skills are highly critical because it doesn't matter you throw everything into a highly complex software. If you can't debug it or interpret it properly as garbage in equals garbage out. Your analytical ability will determine how quickly and how fast you can analyze a structure. Analytical abilities may even lead into such things as programming languages which I highly recommend everyone pick up. It can speed up how you analyze a structure so you can spend more times in the areas that are critical. Number five, now this is problem solving. It's everything we do is some big problem. So the architect comes with a set of drawings and they have a certain vision. So how are you gonna analyze that problem to come up with specific solutions? Sometimes you may be looking at different areas where you need to transfer load. Can you set up the problem and can you look at the load paths that you have available to you so you can come with the most efficient design? Now, problem solving is probably where you spend most of your time as most of what we do as engineers is solving someone's problem. I always love solving those problems to try and find the solutions, the most efficient design. How am I gonna approach it? And sometimes the most logical path isn't the best way. Some of the best designs are extremely elegant, but are also extremely simple. It may have not been what you'd traditionally do with that column, slab and beam solution. Leading in from problem solving and logical thinking, we come into number four, and this is creativity. When anyone thinks about an engineer, we think about rigid rule sets. We've just done the prescriptive approach. We've followed the code and got to the answer. We do not think about creativity as being a beneficial for an engineer, but some of the best engineers will come up with the most creative solutions and come up with the best designs. And when we look at old engineers back in the day, some of the most beautiful structures like the domes in Florence, the Galdi Sacra Familia, many others, these guys were not only architects, they were also engineers and they had the flair for creativity to come up with the most unique solutions. So if you wanna to be at the top of your game, you need to make sure you're also building 
on that creativity. Number three, and this is something that you really need to build into a routine, and this is continuous learning. Engineering has the biggest broad range of subjects that you could possibly follow. You can go everything from timber, concrete, steel, pre-stress, reinforced concrete, tension structures, arches. They all behave differently and they all have their different components. So it's important that you have a broad range of experiences so you know what you need to look out for, what things you need to consider. So you need to be constantly learning because when you've just finished university, I hate to say it, you've only really just scratched the surface of engineering. Even me, I'm now 15 years out or so, I'm still learning today when I'm doing research for my YouTube channel, whether I'm learning about different aspects of design. Something about continuous learning should also challenge the preconceptions that you have. As sometimes you may have thought something is true, doesn't mean it's always so. So don't be afraid to challenge what you currently believe. This will make you a better engineer. I'd just like to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare can help make 2022 a year of learning, growth, and connecting through creativity. If you're needing those specific skills to help build, learn, and make you into a better engineer, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. Such things as improving your analytical skills and building Python programming. And Skillshare has some perfect courses to help improve your Python skills. Skillshare also doesn't just rely on hard skills as well. It also has some of those soft skill building courses, such as building leadership, communication, written activities, and even drawing. There's new premium content launched weekly. So there's always something new and better to discover. I've got a link in the below description where the first 1,000 subscribers will get a one month free trial on Skillshare. So make sure you check it out. Coming in at number two, and this is a team player. The quote that no person is an island is not more fitting for an engineer. It's not one person can design a building. You can get blinkers on and miss some of the basic stuff. So whether you're just starting out, you're doing the basic designs, being a good team member and helping out wherever you can. Also looking out for other people's and opening your eyes. As a team member, you're not just focusing on that one element that you're looking at. You're looking at a project as a whole as someone else may have missed something. So bringing it up and having discussions. Projects also take a lot of back and forth. So when you do have a little bit of free time, talking to your team members saying, look, is there anything I can do to help out? Because it will pay back in droves is when you're too busy, then they can help you out. Everything we do, it's in some form of team. We first start off our internal designs where we're just dealing with engineers and someone within our company. Then that team grows to the architect. We're going back and forth with the developer who's got one set of skills. You've got the architect that's got another set of skills and then you move into the builder. So your team is constantly growing. Doesn't matter what part of the team you're in, you're making sure that you're actually a good team player. Coming in at number one is one of the most important skills that you need to have as an engineer is everything we do is related to it. And this is your communication skills. And it's about communicating to the audience. So if you're communicating to engineers, you can be more technical. If you're reporting to builders or architects, you need to know what is the knowledge that they have so you can explain the terms that they will understand. So communication skills is everything. It doesn't matter how good an engineer you are. If you can't tell someone the problem or explain it in terms that they will understand, it is really useless. At the end of the day, it's what we get paid for in the end is either have those engineering advice about what they should do, how to, how they should approach it and how they should think about it. Those drawing documentations of how they're gonna build the building, making sure you're communicating everything or even your computation packs. Now this means a little bit more technical, but your computation packs also need to tell a story. If you've got great communication skills, people tend to follow you, potentially keep additional clients, which is highly beneficial. Your projects will go smoother, so they will enjoy working with you and you become that more rounded engineer. If you wish to support the channel further, I've got links to my Patreon in the below description. With through a small donation, you can help make this content better and help get it out to more people, much like the many patrons that have got listed off to the side here. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.